Good, good old United States of America. No, all people. Do all people receive it? No. But it's offered to all. Titus chapter 2 starting with verse 11 says, For the grace, the favor of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives Amen. in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, oh, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. And then Paul goes on and says, uh, these then are the things you should teach. <coughs> Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. So we see here that this grace is offered to every single human being. There was a time in your life where you responded to that grace. Do you remember when that was? For me, it was many, many, many years ago on a Friday night and a preacher was, was up on, on, the, on the stage and he said, is there anybody out there that wants to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Mm -hmm. And I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew it was time for me to do that. I knew that if I didn't do it at that moment, I would revert back to all my old ways and experience all the garbage and I would be destined to hell. Okay? I, I came to a realization that I needed him. I needed Jesus. Do you remember that, that day when you said, I need you, Jesus? That day you responded to God's offer. You responded to his favor. You responded to his grace. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. Now, as a result, we are saved by grace, by this favor, uh, healed by grace, restored by grace. Uh, and this, this grace or favor is unmerited and undeserved. What does that mean? Can't earn it. Can't earn it. He favors you not because you're a good boy, because you're a good girl. He favors you because his son died on the cross. Amen. See, that is the expression of God's grace. Somebody has once said that grace, G-R-A-C-E, can be an acronym that, that uh, communicates God's riches at Christ's expense. Mm. His riches to you. Because you deserve it? No. Because of the of what he did on that cross, because he paid the price at his expense. Mm -hmm. And we have that now as New Testament believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So now, when God comes to us in the night, and you too encounter an angel, what if you saw an angel tonight? Man, you, you guys would freak out, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, could you imagine you talk about don't be afraid? Oh, call, call my one there's someone in my house. <laughs> Now we encounter God in, in various ways, right? We encounter Him as we spend time in prayer, as we spend time in His Word. Now He can reveal Himself the way He revealed Himself to Mary. He's able to do that, and, and quite frankly, I'm willing to let Him do that. I think that would be cool. But more likely, it is, you know, during your quiet time, as you meditate on Him, as you focus on Him, as you worship Him, right? As you come into His presence. Uh, you too will encounter him and you too will hear you are highly favored. You are favored. Victor, you are favored. Right? Victoria, you are favored. All of you, you are favored. You are favored. Who, me? Yes, you. Praise God. That is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When you realize that you cannot do anything to gain his love and acceptance, he loves you because he loves you. Right? That's beautiful. And that is supposed to change our lives. According to, to, to Titus, it's supposed to help us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives. When I know that he loves me beyond condition, I don't want to do things that displease him. You know, when, when I really know that in the core of my being. What else happens on this new path that we're walking? Well, verses 30 through 33, it's the angel speaking. And uh, as we read it here, you know, the, the angel is not confused about what's going to happen or what is happening here. It says here that, um, verse 31, you will be with child. See, those are words of destiny. Um, and you are to give birth 
to him and given them the name Jesus. He will be great. Uh, the Lord will give him the throne. Verse 33, and he will reign. See, these are words of destiny and purpose yes. that were communicated to Mary. Hallelujah. And poor little Mary, she was just a little teenager. You know, she thought that nobody noticed her, right? She thought that, you know, I'm just, I'm just living this life and, and I'm going to marry this guy who my parents told me I should marry and everything, you know? And all of the, a all the sudden, she is chosen to give birth to the Son of God? Amen. My goodness, what purpose, what <laughs> destiny. Are we any different in the sense that we too have a destiny and a purpose? No, it's not to be pregnant and give birth to the Son of God, but it is for something that was designed for you and you alone. Praise God. Does, does, that, does that encourage you? Yes. Last night I was eating Chinese food and I was encouraged. <laughs> because I... You didn't eat... You, we got one dinner and split it, but I, I got the uh, fortune cookie. Did you know that? I got it before you did. And I, and I laid claim to whatever that thing said. And I held it in my hand and I said, Lord, speak to me through this fortune cookie. <laughs> <laughs> You got a weird pastor. You know? <laughs> I, okay. Can God speak through fortune cookies? Yes. Yes. Should we depend on fortune cookies? No. No. He can speak through whatever means he wants. Yes. But I opened that fortune cookie and it read something to the effect of your natural gifts and talents will lead to success. Yes. So I, I saved it. I didn't throw it away with the, with the leftover chow mein. I saved it. I saved it. And I said, you know what? That lines up the scripture. Amen. You know, because he speaks words of destiny. He knows the plans that he has for me. Plans to prosper me, not to harm me. Plans to give me a hope and a future. I grab hold of that. Because let me tell you, there are, there are other voices that will tell you the exact, exact opposite in life. Amen? Amen? I'm not talking about what the devil is saying. I'm not talking about what other people are saying. What is God talking to you about concerning your destiny, concerning your purpose, the thing that he has for you and you alone, and all of us have it. Listen, all of us were born with a set of blueprints that only you can fulfill. Nobody else. Nobody else. Do you know that your <coughs> fingerprints are exclusive? There's nobody on the face of this planet that has your fingerprints, right? That's why people that heist and rip things off, they got to cover their fingerprints, right? They got to wear gloves because they'll be found out. And now with DNA, oh my goodness, look at all the people that got busted now because of DNA. Because every person is unique and special. Amen. 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 And here with Mary, oh my goodness, what a purpose, what, what a destiny. But we too were created with a certain destiny and purpose in mind. And hearing words of destiny like this and purpose bring encouragement to the heart. Yes. The angel was God's mouthpiece to speak words of hope. Mary thought she was just a, a, another regular little girl with no special future. But she finds out from her encounter with God that he has a certain purpose in mind for her life. If you listen, you too can hear prophetic words of destiny. <laughs> They may be simple, but they will be hopeful. They can be such words as, you will overcome this pain and this grief and this mourning. You will find